Hi guys, welcome back to lesson five. In this lesson, we're going to be setting up and recording a vocal. And we're going to talk about the environment that you record in as well, which is very, very important. Before we do that, I just want to do some tidying up. I'm going to show you some housekeeping, like changing colors, things like that. So let's do that now. So with my drums track, I want to make them yellow because everything's all gray at the moment. It just looks a bit boring and I can't distinguish easily what's the guitars what's the drums and what's the pads. So let's click on the drums track up here. And with that highlighted, we'll just come up to the color palette and click yellow. And that's colored the whole track yellow. What we'll do is we'll make all the guitars red. So we're just gonna highlight the first one, the track two, and holding down shift on my keyboard and find an empty space here on track five. Hold down shift and click, that highlights them all. And as there's more than one selected, it's still easier to come over here and do red up here. But for this pad, we can actually just hold down shift whilst we've got our mouse in sort of the bottom right hand corner of this gray section and use our scroll wheel on the mouse if you have one. That will also cycle through the colors. So pads, I normally have sort of a pinky color. So that makes things nice and easier to see. And if you want to change this name of the segment as well because at the moment the track name says pad but the segment says a minor what you do is you just come in double click on the name rename it whatever you want and then just click shift and enter afterwards so shift and enter and that is now named pad and if you want to change one of these segments so for example this segment you might want a different color you would just highlight it and then come up to the palette and choose your color that way. Okay. So recording a singer is essentially the same process as we did in lesson two, where we recorded an acoustic guitar with a microphone. We're just going to be recording a vocal instead of a guitar. So you'll plug in your mic and don't forget to switch on phantom power if you're using a condenser mic. And I do recommend using a condenser mic for vocals. However, if you do just have a normal dynamic mic, that's fine as well. So you increase the gain as you did before until you get a decent level, but not too hot. And we add a mono audio track, just like we did before, add audio track. Choose the input that your microphone is plugged into. Make sure it's mono, just name it vocals or whatever it is you want to name it. Click add track. If you mess up the inputs, by the way, you can always just Make sure your track is highlighted here. In fact, let's just bring this down. And on the left-hand side, just open this top arrow and you can change your input here as well, if you get it wrong. Let's just color this as well. So we'll just do our trick, bottom right-hand corner of this little gray block. I'll down shift and we'll make the vocals a light blue. So as I said before, it's essentially the same thing what we're doing here, but we need to pay a bit more attention to the space that you're in, in terms of reverberations coming off the walls and other associated problems with it. We don't want the sound of the room to affect the vocal recording, like the echoes around the room will come back into the mic and make the recording sound awful. The aim is to have a clean, dry recording, which we can add reverb and other effects to later on, as we see fit. The trouble is if you've got a bad recording recorded in an untreated room, there's not much you can do about it. So if you're in a normal room with no treatment whatsoever, it's just gonna sound awful. So there's some things we can do to help that. So let's talk about the recording environment now. Setting up the acoustics is really, really important. And like I said, ideally you need to fully sound treat your room, but you may not be in a position to do that. So let's talk about some alternative options here. You can make some sound baffles quite cheaply. You can, of course, buy them from audio websites, but they're generally not cheap. And you want to put them around your room like this. But to make them yourself is a lot cheaper. And we made a four part video series here on our YouTube channel. So feel free to go and watch that. If you don't have access to any sound baffles, you can still help a lot with hanging up like thick bedding or a thick duvet hung up around the room, particularly next to the singer. Thick cushions and thick curtains help, and carpet obviously, are a lot better than doing absolutely nothing as they will help to deaden the sound. So if you can, try to enclose the singer as best as you can, as shown here. 
And don't forget to use a vocal pop shield six to 10 inches away, as this will help stop any plosives coming onto the mic, which is when someone says a P or a B, and I'll do that in the mic, P and B, you can hear you get an increase of energy here and it makes it sound awful. So make sure you use a pop shield. And also having a pop shield, it gets the singer to stand back a bit because they can't go any closer. So that's a good thing. Try to use closed back headphones rather than open ones. Here's a picture of both of those. It's just that the closed back ones hardly release any of the sound and the open ones, the sound of the song that the vocalist is listening to in their headphones, is gonna come out of the open back headphones and bleed a little bit into the mic. So obviously turn off any speakers so you don't get any sound come out in your speakers going into the mic. Use headphones, as we said. And just make sure you're in an environment where there's no external noises. If you get noises that come from outside and they come onto your recording, there's not much you can do about it. So we need to try and make this vocal as clean as possible. And one more thing on microphones, I said to use a condenser if you can, but also look at the polar patterns. A polar pattern, as shown here, is essentially where the microphone picks up its frequencies from. And you generally want to use a cardioid, which means it only picks up from the front. Make sure it's not on omnidirectional. And some microphones do have a switch on the front where you can change the polar pattern from cardioid to omni. Just make sure it's not on omni. Otherwise, the microphone will be picking up from all around it and you'll get a bit more of the room sound rather than the direct sound coming from the singer. Don't forget, as I said before, you can add an insert if the singer, or if you're the singer and you want some reverb on it, or the singer you've paid for wants some reverb on the performance, which is quite often. Don't forget you can add reverb here on the insert. Just come to reverb, add something like, the basic one is fine, Roomworks SE. Dial in a little bit of reverb here, maybe a couple of seconds and play with the mix to suit. And as I said before, this will not get recorded onto the track, which is a good thing. So that means that you can then apply it later on because you may want to change this later on. If you record the reverb now, you can't change it. So that's another option. If you want to delete a plugin, just go to the top, press no effect. And as before, as with the guitar, make sure you record several takes either of the whole song all the way through, or several takes of one section at a time, like the verse or the chorus. And I actually recommend the latter there. So if you get the singer to record, let's say five takes of verse one, then move on to five takes of the chorus, etc., etc. That way they get to sort of nail one section at a time. And the reason why we have many, many takes is so we can pick out the best bits later on when we're comping the best bits together. You can also use the other takes to thicken the vocal if we want to. Let's say we want to thicken the vocal in the chorus sections, we can do that. All the extra takes can be used as backing vocals. So same as before, I'm gonna get a professional to sing, which is the same person, funny enough, who played the guitars, as I cannot sing myself, and you wouldn't wanna hear that, believe me. Don't forget to arm your track, press monitor so the singer can hear the performance in their headphones. And don't forget to press record so you can loop around the verse section or loop around the chorus section. All of the audio from this course, the guitars, the vocals, whatever it is, is all going to be available to you in your work files. So if you're not recording vocals, then obviously just go to file browser, go to where all the audio is in the download and just drag in the vocals. I'll make the naming clear so it says vocals recording and then vocals comped and I'll also put in vocals final. So hopefully it's clear for you which vocals to bring in. Okay, so let's start the recording and I'll see you in the next lesson. We better not say a word. No, no, it's better that way, oh yeah. Hey, hey, we better not say a word. No, no, it's better that way, oh yeah Hey, hey, we better not say a word No, no, it's better that way, oh yeah Hey, hey 
So guys, that's the end of the free lessons. If you want to continue making this song with me and adding more and more things and mixing it all together and learning about song structure and comping and organizing the best takes and using reverb, delay, compression, distortion, bringing in a guitar solo, bringing in vocal harmonies and learning my tips and tricks from my own mixing experience over the last 20 years and a bit of basic mastering as well and getting this song ready up to release standard, then head over to borntobridge.com and have a look in the course. The link is in the description below and I hope to see you on the rest of the course. The whole course is five hours long and 22 lessons. And really for what you get, it is insane value for money. All the best guys, I hope to see you then. Cheers guys, bye bye.